Right, yo, welcome back. Today, we'll be talking about vintage Levi's. So, where to find them, how to identify them, and you know, some ways that I style them. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. So first up, we have thrift stores. Thrift stores are actually my go-to just because for one, they're really, really cheap and you know, you get that little like dopamine rush when you dig through piles of clothes and you finally find, you know, that one pair of vintage Levi's. So I guess that's really cool, at least for me, I, I really enjoy doing stuff like that. Oh yes, for my Singaporeans out there, since most of my demography is actually Singaporean, check out Lucky Plaza. That's where actually I find most of my vintage Levi's. Yeah, there's some like renovation going on in my neighbors or something so they're doing a little bit of drilling hopefully this doesn't really affect the audio that much but you know we'll try we'll try all right so looking online i've broken this down into two main segments the first will be to look through secondhand sites such as ebay depop or grill so basically to put it very simply, this is essentially thrifting online. You can still find stuff for pretty cheap, but just gotta spend some time, you know, scouring through the internet looking for what you want. The other option will be to look through curated vintage shops on Instagram, such as these. Granted, you're gonna pay a little bit more, but I would say the price, the additional cost you're paying is actually for the service of them sourcing and curating you know the stuff for you so this last one is mainly for the singaporeans just because i don't know if carousel is a thing overseas but carousel is a really really good platform to look for vintage levi's you know because mainly it's like you know moms and dads and other old people and stuff throwing away or trying to sell away their clothes for a really really low price because they just want to get rid of everything in their wardrobe but yeah i've found quite a lot of pairs of vintage levi's on carousel for prices as low as five dollars and a lot of my friends are also doing the same thing so if carousel is a thing overseas as well you guys should check it out it's probably a pretty good platform before i move on here's a quick tip to very easily identify levi's at a thrift store so what you do is you look for this accurate over here focus all right yeah this accurate over here so if I'm not wrong this is a Levi's trademark and you know only Levi's jeans can have this accurate at the back pocket so yeah quick tip for you guys there are many 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 different ID features you can use to authenticate and date a pair of vintage Levi's but you know it's way too much information for me to condense and put into one video so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you some of the ID features that I've been using and I found easy and you know the most useful when trying to date and authenticate a pair of vintage Levi's okay so based on what I know the community generally says that for a pair of Levi's to be considered vintage they have to be at least 20 years so anything before the 2000s so an easy Easy way you can use to roughly date a pair of Levi's really really fast is to use the wash tags. So the wash tags give us a lot of useful information when it comes to dating a pair of Levi's. So what we should do first is we should look at the material of the wash tag. So right here, if your wash tag is made of this kind of nylon-y material, it usually indicates that this has been manufactured in recent times and hence it is not considered vintage. Right, so with that out of the way, the next thing we should look at is if your pair is made in the USA. So for example, yeah, focus. All right, oh shit. Yeah, I hope you can see. Now I'll put up like another screen right there. But basically, if it's made in the USA, it should be considered vintage because Levi stopped production in the USA in 2002 so if it is made in the USA there's a good chance that this is vintage. So if the wash tags are not present another thing you can do is to look at the numbers embossed on the back of the top button so over here I don't know if you can see it once again I'll put another screen there but yeah so these numbers actually tell us the factory code and with the list i have probably over here you'll be able to tell where you know your pair of levi's is produced so the embossed numbers on the back of the button is also another way if you can tell if your pair of levi's is authentic because all authentic levi's should have the numbers embossed on the back of the button so yeah another quick tip to take it one step further the other thing you can do is to look at the many many numbers on the wash tag so this one also gets a little confusing for myself just because you know there are so many numbers how do we know which one to use right but essentially what it is is some of these numbers are able to tell us the month and year of production generally based on my observation the numbers we should use should not be on the same line as the model number so for example this pair i have here is a pair of 
17501s and as you can see this is manufactured in the seventh month of 1993 so July 1993 is when this pair of Levi's specifically was manufactured all right, so I gotta mention that uh, most of the outfits I'm gonna show you guys are planned for summer just because as I'm filming this, it's summer and besides in Singapore, like it's perpetually hot lah. So yeah, I'm also gonna mention that most of the outfits will contain boots because that's just what I wear on a regular basis. But you can very easily switch them out for like a pair of Converse high tops or any other trainer for that matter and it will still work. For this first look, we have a tank top tucked into a pair of creamish yellowish vintage Levi's. On top of that, we threw on my orange Margiela shirt and to top it off, we have my SLP wired boots on feet. So this is just a pretty simple, easy look. The orange of the shirt kind of plays on the contra orange contrast stitching on the jeans. And yeah, it's just something pretty simple to get you out and about. This next look is another easy, lightweight outfit inspired by how I saw people style the Loewe Fisherman jeans. So I have my linen shirt thrown over a pair of white legged Levi's silver tabs, which I got from my recent trip to the thrift. I will link it somewhere here. And yeah, to top it off again, I, once again, SLP Wyatt's, you know, timeless classic, can never go wrong with that. So to get that Loewe Fisherman jeans look, I gave the, you know, my jeans a big fat turn up at the bottom. You can easily swap out the shirt for like, say a t-shirt or something, and it would still work fine. In fact, that's what I wear on like a day-to-day -day basis when I'm running errands. So this next look is inspired by an outfit I saw on Avery's Instagram from Gear Towards Gear. I tucked in a vintage tee into a black pair of Levi's 501s, which came with Freight hems. On top of that, I threw on a Geoffrey B. Small waistcoat. And to top it off, I have a pair of SAF issued combat boots on feet. So for the Singaporean guys out there, you all cannot complain that you don't have access to boots because you already have been through national service. And for the ladies, I don't know, if you guys want to do it, you could probably steal your dad or your boyfriend's combat boots. I've been doing this waistcoat layering thing for quite a bit lately but essentially this is something that you could try if you want to do some light layering during the summer and not look like you know you stepped out of the shower every time you leave the house <laughs> Alright, and with that, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you guys picked up something from this quick and brief vintage Levi's guy. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, do feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, it helps a lot, so yeah, that'd be cool. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.